Uh, welcome to Whiteboard Wednesday. Uh, today we're going to have a uh, discussion in regard to the one of probably three components that we talk about in regard to the, the pure football element of, uh, of, uh, of a club and, and that is one and probably a critical phase for our club, particularly in, in recent years, has been that of list management. We, at a strategic level, we break the football operations into, into three areas, obviously continue to be very related, and they are, the first one being just simply list management, how we go about recruiting and retaining our players, and uh, looking at things like list structure, list balance, bringing things, you know, how, you know, opportunities when it comes to drafting, having a look at how the salary cap, you know, mixes into all of those things, and uh, we have a full-time person operating in that area, and that's uh, Tim Harrington, who, who drives that, works very closely with the coaches, but obviously Barry Prendergast in the, in the role of recruiting manager. We then focus, in the next phase of our focus is that of player development and obviously ultimately about team performance. So they're the three areas that we focus on. Today I want to talk specifically about uh, about list management and, and, and one one framework or tool, if you like, that we utilise in, in this area to, to basically always give ourselves a sense of where we're at as a, as a group. And, uh, and it's one of those which requires both a a very strong notion of judgment, as in having an assessment of where you think your players are at. Uh, not not only is becoming players within within your own club, but how they're going to impact on the competition, both uh, both now and in the future, and also the judgment as to the longevity or otherwise of some of your more senior players and and of what quality that they that they bring to the group as well. And uh, and quite clearly, we have you know different clubs at different phases at any at any particular time. And, and this this matrix or this framework is really about trying to establish that. In the very first whiteboard Wednesday, I talked about a club being in in one of two phases. It's either it's either in the Premiership mode, and uh, and I said at the time that there's very few clubs who find themselves in Premiership mode at, at any particular time, and uh, or that you're actually building, you know, to, to get yourself into Premiership mode at, at some stage in the future. And, and often the real challenges for clubs is to really establish what phase they're actually in, and uh, and to be in Premiership mode, obviously you need to have a lot of very good players. A number of great players, all at the very you know, peak of their abilities, uh, and there's often a bit of timing and all that and luck and those sorts of things which which come into play. But in the main, you need to have those things actually happening for you to give yourself a real chance. You know, when your club's in a development phase, you know you're you're very much about you know looking at what prospect you have of doing that. And uh, the most difficult phase, and clubs have found themselves in this situation regularly, is when you're sort of stuck in the middle where you you're not sure whether you should be. You know, regrouping and uh, and having another look at redeveloping your list, or in fact, you think you've got another another tilt within your group. And it's interesting even looking at clubs with with trading and drafting and their approach to it. And last year, an example, say with Brisbane and Sydney, who brought in some mature age players into a relatively mature into relatively mature lists with a view that they could continue to evolve and develop. And at that level, we had other clubs such as ours who are quite clearly very much focused on on youth. And at the other end, Western Bulldogs who bring in a Barry Hall because they set themselves in Premiership mode, as Collingwood did with Johnny and, uh, and Luke Ball. But this particular framework, it first came, uh, I've used it for a number of years. It's, um, I saw it, a similar version of it actually when I, when I was studying, I was doing uh, a marketing master's, and it was actually, the matrix which used was as a, a, a product life cycle uh, ma matrix. And, and you think of an example, say, with a company like Apple, who always have a, they have a product which is either in the development phase, products which are obviously you know, going gangbusters at any particular time, and those who are in a more mature phase, and there's that cy the, the, the cyclic nature of all of that happening at the one time, and they need to be well positioned from that point of view, otherwise they could end up with old products, nothing coming through. And so when I saw the matrix, I thought, well, that, that's very similar to what you know, happens in an AFL club, where you obviously need to have senior players, but you need to have players coming through. The AFL put in place a limitation on the number of players you've got on your list, which is the biggest challenge. If you had lists of 80 or 90 or 100 and didn't have salary caps and all that sort of stuff, you could be in any one of the phases at any particular particular time, but at the moment you're restricted simply because of the numbers. So how this this particular matrix works is, is, is we, we judge it at, at, uh, at two obvious levels. The first one is purely the quality of the player, where we, we use a one to seven uh, rating of players, you know, from, from poor through to outstanding, and, that, and those ratings aren't, um, aren't necessarily as you'd see them as players within your own club, but their capacity to impact on the competition. Can they, like an outstanding player has to be an outstanding player in the context of the competition, not, not just an outstanding player within your own club. And then we rate them over, over what we've got is five different phases, and I'll, I'll, I'll talk about those in a, in a moment. But quite clearly, you know, you're, you're looking to, to get players at a mature level and into um, 
and in, into a good stage of their careers uh, all at the same time. What, uh, what I'll, first of all, I'll, I'll work through the various phases that we talk about, and this is where the judgment actually comes into it. The, the first phase is just simply one of introduction, and, and really that's players who maybe in the first, you know, the first uh, two, to, two to three years of their, their AFL career, part of the predictive part of the judgment is saying, okay, what, what level do we think we can actually get them to? Um, and I'll, I'll come through those, those judgments in a moment. The foundation players, again, there's a judgment aspect of it, but you've seen enough of them. They're probably the, you know, the, the four to five year players in the main, but it's not prescriptive about years because some players you know, develop more quickly than others. The classic is that a, a player can still be in this early phases of his career as a ruckman for a, for a number of years. Like we'd say we've got a very raw talent in a Jake Spencer, for example, who we'd see as very much a developing player for a number of years coming in. Progression is a player who should really be you know, ready to impact on the, in the competition. We, we say most players are into, into this phase once they've done their six to seven years, recognising that most times as players come through the system, they tend to lose you know, one, maybe two years of their development through injuries or setbacks that, 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 that they can have. And we've experienced that recently, say, with, uh, with Morton and Jarrett coming through our, our system. They just lose some time coming through. You know, Luke Tapscott has done it very early in his career.